Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And if you've been paying attention to the crypto world like I don't, then you know that she is going nuts. But uh, I did start to look into it. We were getting all these comments on uh, our TikTok posts about if we're using these drives for Chia that we'd been getting in for review. And after you know, going back in my mind to the 80s when those Chia pets existed, we uh, dug into it a little deeper to find out what's going on. It's not grass-covered uh, SSDs. No, but it could be. But this is really interesting to me personally just because it, it relies on all the stuff that we've been accumulating here uh, over the ma past many years of running storage review. And so we wanted to, to start out and just get to understand it better and start by looking at um, how to make a solution on a budget for a small casual miner that just wants to, to see what's going on. And of course, we've reverted back to the uh, HPE microserver Gen 10 Plus. Yeah, there's, so the whole um, the whole thing is you start looking at uh, mining uh, Chia or uh, well, plotting, plotting Chia yeah. and then farming it, is uh, you need something that's uh, fast and powerful for your uh, plotting stage. It's very I.O. intensive. Uh, it's going to wear out a lot of consumer drives and that we're starting to see a lot of those uh, people like, hey, I just bought this thing. It's right. terrible. Well, yeah, we're seeing a ton of that. Uh, the comments on, on Reddit are very much, why is this hard drive plotting faster than the SSD? And it's because the SSD is a garbage. Yes, there's um, like there's this wide spectrum of consumer drives in the market. Well, some are great, some are bad. Most of them are not built or even should be used for this purpose. It's a, you should be buying or leveraging an enterprise product. But with that said, there are some consumer options. There's ways to be smart about it. And for for the love of anything, do not use a QLC product for plotting. Oh, gosh, some poor guy was telling a story yesterday about his QLC drive. You can't trust Samsung drives, he said. And it's like, bro, you've got to do a little more homework. But that's part of what we're doing too. And to Kevin's point, we're actually putting together a, a study now on uh, consumer SSDs to see which one matches up performance and endurance, which is the important part, uh, the best for anyone that wants to do this at, at home. Because ultimately, uh, you know, we just don't want to see people spending money if they're going to go after this on uh, on the wrong thing. So we're going to help out with that on the SSDs. But to Kevin's point, the Chia uh, process has two core components. And one of them is the plotting, which is the making of these uh, roughly 100 gig files. And then the second one is farming, where you put all these files on a hard drive uh, because they just need to be available. So uh, all the drives in, in Chia systems are best addressed as, as JBOD, just individual drives, because it's more important to have the capacity online than to have the capacity resilient, which is something that you and I struggled with out of the gate, yeah, just emotionally, right? It's a hard concept to understand if you are thinking about it as uh, movies or file, like images or something. It's right. like you created them. Yes, they're on a drive. That drive might be singularly reliable, but if it fails, it's gone. In this case, you, the time benefit of having uh, not using that drive and having like another drive mirroring that is a lot of time and value wasted that could have been leveraging a, uh, another plot. And when you start looking at things like uh, bad sectors that might just utterly wreck a, uh, a raid group mm -hmm. or start messing with files, things like that, even bad sectors aren't really minded for these because you're going to have the chances of it messing with a, uh, even if it's the landed, winning block, right? Well, yeah, a winning block inside a plot is minuscule. And then you have you have all that other, that other space that you can still leverage. All right. So no raid. OK, especially for the farming pool, just individual drives is best. And that's actually kind of like why we like this beyond just being a good piece of hardware and having things like ILO available to it for out of band management. Uh, it also has a PCI uh, slot on the back, which we'll uh, get to in a second. So from a technical setup, uh, you've got uh, Ubuntu boot on a USB drive inside. Yeah, and, and to take one step back, the reason we, re we really like this uh, platform right now is uh, unlike a uh, NAS that you're going to be stuck with whatever um, uh, OS the NAS owner pushes on it, this you can run anything you want and by sale price, I'm not, uh, it might have changed in the past few days, but... Um, We've been finding these at close to like 550 to uh, 600 bucks with uh, 16 gig of RAM and the uh, Xeon processor, uh, which gets you into, uh, I think it's a 3.4 gigahertz uh, four core uh, setup, which is not that bad for a plotter. And when you look at it from a, um, a farming system, it, it turns out to be really nice and it holds three and a half inch drives natively, in oh, 
on itself on right. its own, and you, then you can expand it with other uh, JBoot options. Yeah. So we do you want to log back into it? So we set out with this system to try to show what you could do with a value system. And even though NVMe SSDs would be ideal for the plotting part, we used the SATA because that was the one trade-off with this system is we have to use SATA. Uh, so we use the USB for boot for Ubuntu, and then we use one WD uh, Enterprise SATA drive for the plotting, and then three, uh, what do we have, 18 terabyte? Iron Wolf Pros for yeah we had those from Nasri we did not yeah we buy didn't them. go buy them so but stop uh, stop the hate mail um, so we had those from review and it actually puts together a pretty nice little system in in something that's quiet this one's running and you probably can't pick up uh, a whole lot of noise on on the mics there's a little bit um, but really small really power efficient really easy you don't have to build anything you just take it out of the box and go. Um, and yeah, and when you start looking at, uh, okay, how can I efficiently um, farm, uh, like day 50 or, well, depending on the powerful, how powerful your plotter is, like it could be day five, like I have, I have drives now, how do I uh, farm them? Mm -hmm. When you're looking at a uh, Nook or a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi is going to be efficient, it's going to be really, really cheap, but you're going to be sacrificing performance that's going to come into play for uh, that 30 second uh, do I have a winning block type of right. uh, uh, time factor this it's around the same price you found in a lot of the nooks and it has space to hold three and a half inch drives it has a PCI slot the a lot PCI of slots important so let's uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that so w what we're doing now is with that WD drive it's plotting and we started this at about one o'clock uh, yesterday so we were working, uh, had three plots on it already while we were messing around, um, but you're writing four plots at the same time, right? It's between three or four, depending on uh, which ones are wrapped up and which ones are uh, moving on. But right now, uh, like we're seeing, uh, here, let me expand this guy so we can watch the, uh, watch the columns, but um, we're getting around 165 megabytes a second on the uh, read side. And uh, right as it comes up, it'll bounce around between 150 to uh, 400 megabytes per second. Um, and that's not bad for a little SATA drive. I mean, that's pretty competent. And in fact, if this thing's able to keep the pace up and churn out what we think will be about six plots a day with this rig, right? Um, I think we're probably going to see, uh, well, I'm hoping more than eight. Uh, there are... Um, there's probably some efficiencies to be had by trying out a different SSD or uh, how it's being plotted against the SSD. But um, while the platform can do plotting and do it pretty well, I think the advantage for this is really the farming side. Right. Uh, we've seen a lot of like really scary platforms on the uh, the farming side right now, or some that are so underpowered that it's going to risk what your uh, reward uh, setup would be. This is plenty powerful to plot or well, plot and, and farm and at the farm. same time. Yeah, so pull up the, the GUI real quick and show the, the farming setup. So we've got on this one seven plots that are completed. Um, it, it hit four of them overnight and mm, might get a couple more here before uh, the day is out. You can see the data footprint of uh, you know, how they measured about 700 uh, gig, so we're slowly filling up those drives, but it won't take but a couple weeks to fully populate the three drives we have in here. Yeah, and if uh, you took the approach of, well, I'm going to have two SSDs and initially use those as uh, scratch space, and then as you start filling up your other two hard drives, then go to three hard drives, one SSD. Um, yeah, you could definitely do that, swap in three SSDs even, right, and have them all dumped to the hard drive till it's full and then peel them back. So we, we teased also the PCIe slot. If you wanted to get fancy, you could put a, a HBA in there and connect it to a JBOD. Yeah, most of the, um, the LSI like 9300 or 9200 models have a half height, half length option. Uh, they'll give you uh, eight lanes uh, external. And those cards are relatively cheap and very abundant. Uh, so there's there's some options and then you can connect them to like old NetApp JBODs or Supermicro JBODs or things like that. And as you can see, our uh, time to win estimate is about a year, which seems like a long time. But yesterday, when we only had three plots on there, it was two years. So yes. we're making progress. And in fact, we're actually um, outpacing overall network growth. Uh, I think it's going to spike. Like. Well, it, it, cer <laughs> it certainly will. But if we're looking at it right now today, 
with relatively modest um, hardware and you don't need the big fancy uh, 18 terabyte drives. We just happen to have them from that prior review. You could put sixes or eights or whatever you have. There's no, there's no need to really have the big ones unless you're looking to build a larger farm. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to get started. Um, Kevin's done some work on uh, optimizing how we set up the workloads. We're running four, three or four, you said at the moment. Yeah, the if you've not, uh, if you haven't really gone into Linux a lot, uh, most of the things you do in Linux are through the uh, console. And the uh, the tough part with uh, the, the current Shia plotting side, it's much more stable uh, going CLI than through the GUI. So yeah, most people that have had complaints have been the GUI crashes or get stuck or whatever. And it's that part's a little unfortunate because if you don't finish your plot, you can't just pick it back up, can you? No, you have to restart. And right now, um, I think depending on the platform, it takes about 48 hours uh, per a uh, plot. So there's some time wasted if you have to, uh, if you lose it all. And that is one other good point about this hardware versus some DIY solutions. If you're not comfortable building your own system, this is ready to go out of the box, like we said, but it's also really stable because it's enterprise light components, right? Yeah, and that's an advantage right now where um, like you've, you've farmed out a lot of plots and right now it's the, the advantage is you have to keep it online. Would you rather be using something that uh, is an exposed motherboard on a cardboard box with fans which you, over it? Which you can do. Yeah, or something with ILO and, um, and it's a pretty it's a pretty nice platform when you look at the uh, the other things you have in that price range. Yeah, and that's the key point. This thing is really affordable, and even if you don't use it for Chia, you can do so much more with it. We've put TrueNAS on this box. We've used it as a backup target. Uh, you've done Veeam NAS protection on it. You've done all sorts of, of uh, really useful things. Yes, and now that hard drive supplies are getting uh, very low, you even include the little screws to uh, mount the hard drives in your enclosure just in case those are getting low in stock these yeah, days. I think those are okay. In case Chia doesn't work out, you'll still have a nice little box to use uh, for something else, make it a true NAS or whatever else you want. Uh, and stay tuned, we've got more data coming on SSDs that will be beneficial for this work to try to help you guys figure out where to invest, what drives are safe to use, and, and so on. Until then, thanks for tuning in.